The Gemara tells us, Hi man, the boy of a chassid, if somebody wants to be a chassid, Lekayim milu de brachas, he should keep the halachas associated with brachas. So it seems like that in Crown Heights, there's a, currently about um, 15 people that are very interested in becoming chassidim, and they're here to learn all about milu de brachas. The, it's interesting, the Gemara actually lists three things in order to become a chassid. I mean, there's probably many, many sikhs that discuss how to be a chassid. But we're going back to the basics, to the Gemara. The Gemara says, in order to be, be a chassid, one should keep milu de brachas, the halachas of brachas. Some people say, should keep milu de nazik in the laws of damages. That doesn't mean to damage people. It means actually to refrain from causing um, damages to people, to learn all those halachas. The Amrila, some people say, milu de avais, learn all about avais, ethics, mannerisms, musav de recheres, pirkei avais. And what's very interesting that we find with al Rebbe, who started the movement of Chassidus Chabad, we find al Tareb made a major emphasis in a very unusual way in his Shulchan Aruch, in the Milud and Azikin, Milud and Brachis, and Milud Avis. We'll start for the most relevant hour shir tonight. Milud the Brachis, al Tareb wrote three Svarim on Brachis. Aside from the fact that al Tareb Shulchan Aruch treats Birchis Hanen in a very unusual way, very, very thorough way, al Rebbe wasn't satisfied with the Shulchan Aruch and he wrote another book after the Shulchan Aruch where he changed and modified some halachas and added things. And this book is called Luach Birches Hanenen. The Rebbe brings, that some suggest that the reason why the al Rebbe called it a Luach because he intended for it to be hanged on the wall like a Luach Kel Chabad because Brachas is such a relevant thing. It's very practical. Shabbos happens once a week and Hanukkah is once a year. But brachas happens a couple of times a day. We all sit and eat. And some of us eat quite a lot. So brachas is relevant wherever you go. The Alter Rebbe wanted everybody should be shagged. Everybody should be familiar with knowing all the halachas of brachas. So he made a luach birchas hanenen. After luach birchas hanenen, the Alter Rebbe didn't stop there. And he made another sefer called Seder birchas hanenen. And he published it in the Siddur. Siddur is supposed to be a popular guy. Siddur is not a sefer of halachas. Most of the halachas are not found in the Siddur, but Birchus Hanen and the laws of Brachas, Al Rebbe dedicated a section in his Siddur, many, many pages, 13 chapters, all the halachas of Brachas. So that's Milud de Brachas. We find the same thing with Milud and Azikin, the laws of Chesh Mishpat, financial matters. The Al Rebbe wrote a separate Sefer on the, on the Indian of Chesh Mishpat and the Indian of Nazikin. The Al Rebbe wrote on the whole Shachan, on Shachan Arach in general. Whereas in the rest of Shulchan Aruch, the al Rebbe followed the pattern of the Shulchan Aruch. Every chapter in Shulchan Aruch, in the original Shulchan Aruch, the same chapter as in al Rebbe Shulchan Aruch, when it came to Chayesh Mishpah, the al Rebbe let loose, if you may say, from the order of the Shulchan Aruch. The al Rebbe started his own unique structure and wrote his own Sefer Shulchan Aruch on Chayesh Mishpah. Perek Aleph, Perek Beis, or Simen Aleph, Simen Beis, a, a number of chapters describing, putting it together in his own unique style, not following the Shulchan Aruch at all, the key halachas of Chayish Mishpah that are relevant for every human being to know. And interesting, in, in Yerodeya, there's one section which the Alter Rebbe did the same, that's in Hilchus Ribis. Hilchus Ribis was Joseph financial matters. The Alter Rebbe cut out the system of Shulchan Aruch. It doesn't follow the same Kufayin Alf, Kufayin Beis, Kufayin Gimel. He made his own book on Ribis. And we mentioned that the third thing the Gemara says, if you want to be a chassid, is milu de'avis. The milu de'avis, the whole chassidus is milu de'avis, is derecheres, musav derecheres, in the way of chassidus. But al Rebbe also, there's two other sections of Shulchan Aruch, which we haven't mentioned, Hilchis Talmud Toira, the al Rebbe also did not follow the pattern of Shulchan Aruch, and wrote his own book of Hilchis Talmud Toira. In Shulchan Aruch, Hilchis Talmud Toira, Simen Reish Mem Beiz, Reish Mem Gimel, Reish Mem Dal, there's a section in Shulchan Aruch, dealing with Hilchis Talmud Toira. The Alter Rebbe wrote his own Hilchas Talmud Torah, Perik Aleph, Perik Beis, Perik Gimel, Perik Dalit, almost like his own Rambam. And one other section, Shulchan Aruch, we're approaching Chavdal Tevis, the arts of the Alter Rebbe, so it's good to think about this. There's a section, Shulchan Aruch, Sima Kuf Nun Vav, which is all in Yanam of Musav and the And Alter Rebbe, anybody who's familiar with Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch will know that this Sima and Alter Rebbe doesn't follow his regular style. The whole Simon is full of Marmakoymis and Pelpulim, not in the Kuntersachan, in the actual text of the Halacha. And yeah, be that as it may, that's a separate discussion. But we're focusing tonight on Hilchas Brachas. Al Rebbe wrote three Svarim on Brachas. And tonight's year we're going to focus, of course, there's a lot of information out there, a wealth of information out there about Brachas. But for the audience over here, what's relevant is Al Rebbe's opinion. 
to the extent that you pick up a package today, the Rav that gives a hechsha decides it's also his responsibility to teach you what kind of bracha to make as well. If the Rav knows kashras, let's assume so. He doesn't necessarily know Hilchas Brachas. Let's assume he knows Hilchas Brachas as well, but the food production and food technology today is so complex that things keep on changing. And what this Rav decides, what the correct brach is, if you go and quote to the Alter Rebbe Shitta, things might be very, very different. So we'll try to focus today on the Alter Rebbe Shitta. I'll just mention, following the idea that we just said about being a chassid, by way of introduction until a few more people show up, that um, tonight's shir is primarily focused on the idea of ikr and tafel, that when you have a mixture of foods, which in the time of Shulchan Aruch, they didn't have too many mixtures, everybody knows the classical example of the herring and the bread. Today's day and age, we've moved way beyond that in determining an ikr and tafel, a primary ingredient and a secondary ingredient in food. So when we talk about ikr and tafel, in chassidus we know that the ikr is a lakus, and the tafel, the secondary thing, is oil, is the world. And we know that everything... The whole entire world is totally tuffled, totally not, totally bottled, totally nullified compared to the lakus, to the ikr, to the primary thing. Now, in, in, in Svarim, in Nigla, there's a discussion of chkira, a lamdash of chkira. How do we define this halacha? That we have a mixture of two different foods. You have a primary ingredient and a secondary ingredient. The halacha is you make a bracha on the ikr, and the tuffle, the secondary ingredient, does, doesn't require a bracha. Is the pshat that because this is secondary, it doesn't require a bracha? Or is the pshat that the bracha that you made in the primary also works for the secondary food? It sounds like this is just purely semantics, but this could have a lot of bearing in halacha. If the secondary food doesn't get a bracha, or it receives the bracha from the ikr. And it seems like, and we're going to see tonight in the shir, there's a lot of evidence pointing in the direction that the pshat is, no, not that the secondary thing doesn't get a bracha, the bracha of the ikr extends onto the tafel, onto the secondary ingredient. And the same thing perhaps we can say when we talk about a lakus and oilamis, that Chassidus teaches us it's not about negating oilamis, negating the world. Uh, the world doesn't need a bracha. A lakus is the main thing, but we have to extend the lakus and through that elevate the world as well. Because the world is secondary to lakus, when we work with a lakus, we use that towards the world as well. So much for introduction. I think it's time to move on to the shir. So we mentioned before that food technology has developed a lot, and as we're speaking, it's developing further. By the end of tonight, there will probably be a bunch of new foods that we didn't know about yesterday. I'm reminded of a story when Anash came to Melbourne, Australia. The first group of Anash that came, the first one of Anash, I think, was um, Rameshah Zalman Feiglin. But after that, it was Vilashansky, a couple of students that came to Australia, and they were hosted by the Feiglins, by his farm. I think the place was called Shepperton, if I'm not mistaken. So, all these chassidim coming out of Russia, and they sat down in the morning for breakfast, and they were served cornflakes. And they pick up the cornflakes, and they look up and down. Vosidos? Ich mein das is Michael Behema. I think this is animal food. Eschodaf das kochen? Maybe you have to cook it. After that, we have to pour water on it. And there was a whole machloik, all these three, four, sitting, sitting around the table, and none of them knew what you're supposed to do with cornflakes. And then one of the Fagel and Aussie boys walked in and says, Guys, eat! <laughs> Fagel says, Guys, eat! 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 Fag
And specifically amongst Rabbanim, including Rabbanim Anash, some Rabbanim will say one way, and some I mean, that's always the case that it's always one Rabbi will say one way, another Rabbi will say differently. But it's very relevant. We need to know what bracha to make. You need to know what bracha you're making something. I'll take a, a classical example of a very common food. Of course, a food which is a taiva, and we only eat it, Mamish Hashem Shemaim, is a food today called an ice cream sandwich. So in contemporary post can discuss what bracha to make an ice cream sandwich. Do you make it in the shahakal? Do you make it in the zoinus? Or maybe you make both brachas? I'm reminded, I was telling my kids about a story of someone that was doing, he had a question about tefillin, that he was writing with one hand and everything else he was doing with the other hand. And he, didn't know what, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know what, which hand to put on tefillin. And he asked the Rebbe, and the Rebbe told him to go ask Rabbani Anash. So it wasn't this wise move. He went and asked four Rabbanim. You're always supposed to ask an odd number. And he got four different answers. So I'm repeating it to my children. I got stuck to repeating the story. One said he's put on the right. One said on the left. One said both. Then I said, this, probably the fourth one said, don't put it on at all. Now, so my kids said, no. The fourth one was, one said first right and then left. The other one said first left and then right. So I, I don't know of an, an opinion that says, you're making the ice cream sandwich from Zoinus, Shahakal, both. Not you don't make it all. No, that not. Which one first? Mazoinus and then Shakal, Shakal and then Mazoinus. I mean, there is a Chesidu Shavart. One of the Chassid once said there is one food you don't make a brach on it, and that's tea. Shavart. This is not Halach Lamaisa. He said, he didn't know about ice cream sandwiches. He said, how can you make a bracha when you're becoming a nifrus from a lukus? The, the extent of taiva. So these Chassidim understood was a cup of tea. A glass of tea, that was a taiva. So you're going to drink a hot glass of tea. And you're going to be making a brach on it while you're separating yourself a says and every time you're filling, fulfilling your tivus, you're becoming, you're, you're, it's going to shalosh klips at meis. How can you make a brach on that? Again, that's a word, that's not a halacha. So let's, let's, I'm going to go through a couple of klolim, a couple of guiding principles about ikr and tafel. And later we'll move on to specific foods. So the klolim might be a bit difficult because we're going to go through some, some general principles without discussing specific foods, it's important to understand the principles and then apply to the particular foods. And the reason we're going to be following that order is because there's so many foods out there, we can't just discuss specific foods. We need to get the principles clear and then you can apply them to every other taiva that's developed as we speak. So, let me just start with a basic um, guideline. A general guideline, and that is a general guideline that is there's two forms of ikr and tuffle. When we say there's a ikr, a primary ingredient, and a tuffle, a secondary ingredient, we could talk about primary, physically primary food. In reality, this is the main ingredient, or we could talk about ikr bahalacha. Halacha considers this food to be a primary ingredient. I'll give a couple of examples. By the way, you make a bracha on water only when you're thirsty. Otherwise, water, you don't make a bracha if you're not thirsty, if you're not drinking water. So we said there's an ikr in metzias and an ikr in halacha. Ikr in halacha. Just to give an example of ikr in halacha. If someone's at a meal and you wash for bread, so all the food that's what we call dvarim haboy machmas asud, all the food that is eaten in a meal of bread, if it's called Machas Asud, again, this is a whole discussion which is beyond the scope of this year. But whatever is, has that label, we don't make a bracha on that. Why is that? Because halacha terms bread, considers bread, as an ikr, as a primary ingredient, as a primary food, and everything else is secondary, and everything else doesn't get a bracha. That's an example of an ikr and halacha. Another example of an ikr and halacha, wine and other liquids. Halacha tells us that if you drink wine... The bracha on wine exempts all other liquids. Later we'll talk about practical liquor. There's a machloikas, what are the conditions, what are the guidelines for that. Again, that's not a nice discussion. There are some contemporary posts, and by the way, just I'll mention that, that say it only applies to wine and not to grape juice. That doesn't have the chish. Even if grape juice is hagafen, it's not about hagafen, it's about yayin. And it has to be considered yayin in order to exempt other liquids. But that's, again, that's a halacha the concept. Another form of ikr and tafel and halacha is roiv. Halacha says that if you have a mixture of foods, then the majority ingredient overrides the minority ingredient, and you make a bracha on the majority as per the guidance that we'll discuss soon. 
Another example, Dagon, grain. We have five types of grain. Wheat, barley, rye, oat, and spelt. And any food that has, that is mixed with one of these five types, the grain is considered the primary ingredient in halacha. I don't care what you say. Halacha says that's the main ingredient. And if we'll make a brach on the grain, again, depending on the conditions, but that's, I'm just discussing the general principle. But then we have something which is an ikr, not based on halachic guidelines, it's an ikr b'metzius, it's practically an ikr. We have two foods, and one food is there to be a condiment, lahachshar, to improve, to give a taste to the other food. The food that's there to give a taste to the other food, to, to improve its taste, the improver is called the tuffel, the secondary thing, and the food that you want to have is called the ikr. There is... Another example of a, when we talk about an ikr b'metzius, is a case where there's two foods which are mixed together and one is there to help the other one. There is a situation which halacha goes a bit further and says, if you have two foods which are made in order to eat together, they were made together and they were made as one unit, they become so strong and they got mixed so strong that's because one of them is considered the main thing, the other one is considered the secondary thing, and that's how it was made, that later when I separate it, the secondary thing, although it's eaten independently, is considered secondary, and it won't receive a bracha. And then there's a case, a third form of Ikar and Tafel, I'm going to explain these examples momentarily, where you don't even have two foods mixed together, you have one food, and later you eat another food, but the second food is eaten for a side reason. It's eaten because of something that went wrong, or something about the first food. I'll, I'll explain in a second what I'm talking about. So when you're eating a food, not mixed with an original, I mean, this is the classical example that everybody learns in school, ikra and tafel, somebody eats a salty fish, and then later eats a piece of bread in order to take away the taste of the salty fish. It's not a food, two foods that are mixed together. The bread is considered secondary because I'm only eating it in order to remove the taste of the maliach of the salty fish. That's the classical ikar and tafel. So let's look at some examples. We said if you have two foods and one food improves the other food, the improver is considered secondary. So first it's important to establish we mentioned before something about majority minority. Majority minority is when we don't know which is the primary ingredient. When we know which is the primary ingredient, we don't have to look at majority minority. For example, spices. Spices in a food. That's a real ikr and tafel. It's not halach ikr and tafel. You don't start measuring which is more, which is less. There's the food and there's the spice. The spice is there to give a taste in the food. So clearly you make a bracha on the food and not on the spice. Or creams that you smear on on on, uh, on a bread because bread always is considered the primary ingredient of the meal. Crackers. So the shme- the stuff that you're smearing on the cracker, the cracker is what you're eating, but you want to give it a taste, so you're putting something, you're smearing something on top of it. Iker b'metzius, iker habala hachshe, iker habala lafet. It's there to give a taste to the cracker. No, no, it's actually, Roiv comes in later. What we're saying over here is that Roiv only comes in when we have a doubt what's the Iker and Tafel. Once we know what's the Iker and Tafel, we, we don't even look at Roiv. Oh, we'll talk about Dog in a second. Soups, soups is, a, is a complicated concept in Halacha, and I'd rather not discuss soups tonight. I'm just going to mention that soup is a whole separate section of Halacha about the Bracha and soups. And there's different types of soups, and if it's a mixture of mizoinus and hadama, there's four different shittas in halacha, and we and we try to take into account all the different shittas. And if you cook the croutons with the soup, you cook them separately. I'm not going to go into that whole thing, but I'll just mention one example of a liquid and a salad, just to make it simple. A simple example of ikra and tafel. A, port- a person cooks a fruit soup, cooks fruit, and he has a liquid. Yeah, I'll stick to the most simplest example and he has liquid, and he's having the liquid with the fruit, the water of the kampat, the, the easiest example before we get complicated over here, so clearly the liquid is the secondary ingredient, everybody knows the most important ingredient, the primary ingredient here, 
Not in halacha, in metzius. In gashmis is the fruit, and the water is just secondary to the to the kampat. Therefore, the bracha will be made on the kampat. Chirain with fish. You might like chirain very, very much. And you might be one of those people that dip the fish into the chirain, the chirain into the fish, rather than the fish into the chirain. Almost. But generally speaking, it could be more chirain than fish, but fish is the food that you're eating. And the chirain is enhancing the taste of the fish. You don't like fish the way it is, and you want it to have chirain. You might want it to have dipped in chirain. You might want to be drowning in chirain. But the, the fish is the primary food. Carrot with fish. It's very common that people serve fish and they put a carrot on top. So the carrot is there to enhance the fish. Begashmis. Now here's something very, very important because the Metziah says the way it's served is usually the carrot is on top of the fish. That's how the balabusters serve it. That means what you're first going to be eating is if you follow the order the way it's you know, top and bottom, not, not right to left. So you, if you'll be eating the carrot first, we run into a bit of a problem over here because when we're talking about ikr and tafel, we can discuss this a bit more soon, the bracha on the primary food covers the secondary food. But if you didn't make it a bracha on the primary food, he can't cover the secondary food. So we're talking over here in a case where a person ate the fish, started eating the fish, and now the carrot, because he's there to enhance the fish, will be covered by the bracha on the fish. There's some foods where people can argue about, which is really, you know, it's not very clear. You'll ask two different people to take a survey. One person will say one way, one person will say another way. Which is the primary food? There's some general, clear, common sense guidelines, but common sense is not that common after all. And then sometimes people can argue. This, for example, some that posts can talk about, nuts that are covered with sugar. What do people want? Let's, let's try an- analyze over here. Do people want to eat nuts? And they just want it to be sweet because people have tibus and everything has to be sweet. You have a sweet tooth and therefore they want it to be coated with sugar. Or do they want to eat sugar? They want to eat something sweet and they want it to have a crunchy taste of nuts. It seems common sense that people want to eat nuts and that's what Abzal Moshim, Dorak and Allah and Pascha when he was asked in Shiloh as do many previous earlier priests can discuss this that the nuts with the sugar, the brach will be on the nuts, the ha'ets on the nut and the sugar will be covered by the, by the nuts of sugar being secondary. But today we've advanced. Today it's not only it's not nuts coated with sugar, it's chocolate covered nuts. Now you could argue it's the same thing, and you could argue that maybe no. Fakir, today it's the industry of chocolate, it's the chocolate industry, and we put everything into chocolate. We put coffee into chocolate, coffee beans, and we put raisins into chocolate. It's all about having chocolate. Another method how to have chocolate for someone who's a chocolate. It could be chocolate, and sh- the, the shaila about nuts and sugar, and chocolate with sugar, sorry, nuts and sugar, and nuts and chocolate, could be two different discussions. Now this is not a shaila in halacha as, as much as it's a shaila in, in Metzius. It's a practical question. What's the primary ingredient for a person? It's important to mention over here, at this juncture, something that the Alter Rebbe says. The Shulchan Aruch brings two opinions, but says you should be, you should, since it's two opinions, suffer brachas lahakal, we should avoid making an unnecessary bracha, not uh, follow the opinion that makes one bracha less. In, in Siddur, he doesn't even mention two opinions. The Alter Rebbe says that if you have a food, where you clearly want both foods, I want A and I want B. In English, say so you can't have the cake and eat it, I don't know why. You want the cake and the other item also. You want, you want all the foods over here. I want both. And I want them both equally. Not that I'm trying to want more, one more than the other. Two acres. But it's a situation where you wouldn't eat A if not for B. There's such kind of foods that on your own you wouldn't eat it. Only together with something else I would eat it. But when I'm eating it together, I want both. al Rebbe says, now, I can't go into people's minds over here and think exactly which food fits that bill. If people around the table over here tonight. But if you have a food like that, the Alter Rebbe, in Siddur, in Shulchan Aruch, there's two opinions, but in Siddur, he paskins clearly, and even in Shulchan Aruch, he paskins like that, but just because there's two opinions. That if you're only eating it because of another food, that itself makes it a tougher, makes it a secondary food, and it gets covered by the other food. So if you're only eating something because of something else, it also becomes a tougher. These were all examples of what we call tafel habala haksha, tafel habala lafis, where you're eating a food to help out another food. Then there's something in halacha
of something which is called a tuffle, it's called a secondary food, because it's there for a side purpose. And it's not there to improve the food. It's there for a side benefit. The classical example that we mentioned already several times tonight, when someone is eating herring, and then he's having bread. The bread is not there to enhance the herring. The bread actually has nothing to do with the herring. The bread has to do with your throat. You right now have a problem. You ate herring, and now you have this horrible, salty feeling in your throat. In order to deal with that problem, you're going to go and eat bread to remove the horrible feeling that the herring has caused. Says the Gemara that this bread is considered secondary because it came for a side purpose. You didn't, it didn't come for eating, I'm not interested in eating bread right now. And it could be a lot of examples. A person could eat a radish, and the radish is very, very sharp. Herring is too salty. The radish is too sharp. You don't like the sharp taste, so you put something else in your mouth to remove the sharp taste of the radish. That's what we call a tuffle haba lematodot dodas for a side benefit. Chassidic Chabad Mashke is sometimes a classical classic of uh, on the menu. You're having Mashke. And then you're having something called Far Bison. You're eating the Far Bison, let's assume. A bit hard to assume that's the case. You're eating the Far Bison not because Chas Vashon won Far Bison. No, no, no. The Chas once said he has Ava Vira. He has Ava for the Far Bison and Yira for the Mashke. He loves Far Bison, but he doesn't like Mashke. So the person just wants mashka, just to say l'chaim, l'shem mitzvah l'chaim. No, you can't, l'chaim, his mom's gonna, it's, it's, he can't handle the taste of the l'chaim. So he has to take a bit of her bison to remove the taste, but he does has a shalom, the bison could be tasteless, could be carbon, he'll also go for it. Oh, we'll talk about that soon. Another case is where a person, it could be different, we're talking about it's too sharp, it's too salty. It could be a case where the other way around, it's too sweet. Some people don't like things that are too sweet. The Abish also likes, the Alter Rebbe says in Tani, two tastes, sweet and sharp. Sadiqim and Bainanim. A person is eating ice cream, no, ice cream is too sweet. And he has to have the taiva, and then he has to remove the taiva through another taiva. So since the ice cream is too sweet, so he wants to take a drink to remove the sweetness of the ice cream. So he's only having it, again, for a secondary purpose. Sometimes, it's a bit complicated, sometimes person's eating nuts, salty, you know, pistachio, pistachio nuts, and he wants to remove the salty taste, and he's drinking. But it could be a bit different. It could be because he ate so many nuts, he became thirsty. It's not clear now. Is it because he became, if it's because he became thirsty, they make a brach on the drink because he's thirsty. If it's because of that, you want to remove that salty taste, then it's a tuffle. A food got stuck in a person's throat, and he has to get the food down. So he's taking a drink to get the food down. Again, it's a tuffle. A person is drinking tea, and he wants the tea to have a taste, so he puts a cube of sugar in his mouth. Now, sugar and tea happen to have the same bracha. All those machloik is what bracha make on sugar, and some surfer, we know when the first time he learned to with it was when he was a little kid. Much younger than everybody in the audience tonight. He was, I think, six years old. He was learned halachs of brachas, and he discovered his machloik is what bracha make on sugar, and from then... No more candies. Tzukrikas, that was the classical treat that kids got. Sugar went off the menu because machlekes, they didn't want to run into this machlekes. Yeah, so let's not talk about sugar with tea because sugar and tea, even though it's a machlekes, but bracha sugar is lepoil, we're making a chocolate. Let's talk, he's putting a grape in his mouth when he's having tea. He's putting a, a something to give a bit of a taste in the tea. The problem with a lot of these examples is, all very good examples, but we made a a a a, a a Yisoidus dig a klal in the beginning, and we said that Iker and Tafel means that the Barach on the primary food covers the secondary food. You have to make a Barach on the primary food, and then it will cover the secondary food. Now, you can't cover another food unless you were planning to have the other food. In a lot of the examples that we mentioned so far, the guy never even planned to have this other food. Take the example of a guy that had something stuck in his throat. You were planning to have something stuck in your throat? When you made the Barach on the item that got stuck in your throat, you were planning just to have the cheesecake. Whatever it is. Now if something has stuck in the throat, he's taking a drink to get to get take away the taste. He, so you can't say the barakha on the ikr will cover the tuffle because you never had a mind to have a tuffle. The barakha has to go on the tuffle. Okay, not always do you have to have a mind. Sometimes you can say 
if that's the normal way of doing it, if you always do it this way, I mean, you don't always get things stuck in your throat, so that's not a good example. But food, which is, there's a certain say that you always have together with ice cream, it's too sweet, and you always take the drink with the ice cream. No, so that you can say it's considered as if you had a mind. But a like, case like something got stuck in his throat, he didn't have any kavana, the, 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 the tuffle never got a bracha. And because of this call that we just now mentioned, that it's important that every food gets a bracha, even the secondary food has to get a bracha, all it could do is take the bracha of the ikr. In a case where you didn't make a bracha on the ikr, then of course the tuffle needs a bracha. For example, I'll give you a couple of examples. If you eat the tuffle first, the whole idea is a birches ikr poiter atfeilim. A varech al ikr poiter atfeilim. You make a brach on the primary food and it covers the secondary food. But if you're eating first the secondary food, you can't say no. I'll eat it without a bracha. You can't eat anything without a bracha. This item never received a bracha. Well, like we said before, if you weren't planning to eat the secondary food, or if you moved. Shini makim. Bechlal, we have a klal and bracha. So you eat something in one place and you move to another room, you sometimes, very often, you have to make a new bracha. So you ate the primary ingredient in here. You walk into the other room to eat the secondary ingredient. And then you say, ikr and tafel. <laughs> the tafel can't receive the bracha if you're in another room. Or, for example, if the ikr is something that doesn't require a bracha. A person had medicine, a very bitter medicine. You don't make a bracha medicine. Now, because the medicine gave him a bitter taste, he's going to take something else. And then he's going to say, no, I learned a cheder... If it's something is secondary, he doesn't need a bracha. Yeah, that's because he made a bracha on the, on the ikr. But here he had a bitter medicine. He made no bracha. Then he's taking a drink. Let's not talk water. Water, you only make a bracha, like I said, if you're thirsty. Then he's taking soda. Because look, it's a tafel. But he never made a bracha on the ikr. Or if a person by mistake didn't make a bracha on the ikr. There's, there's a, a question that modern day poets can edit. See, is the first one I think that discusses this. Interesting question about bracha achreina. The halacha of ikr and tafel applies to both bracha rishayna and bracha achreina. So if you, the after blessing of the primary food covers the secondary food. So what if you ate an ikr and the ikr was less than a shir? And you're eating with it a tafel, but a tafel was a shir. So can you not make a bracha on the tafel? According to what we're explaining right now, the whole idea is that the ikr covers... The tafel. So if you didn't make an after blessing on the ikr, because it was less than a shear, you'll have to make an after blessing on the tafel. A very common common case is a person's eating food and he says, you know, I need, it needs a bit more sugar. It needs a bit more spices. So spices is a clear ikr, right? A cl- sorry, a clear tafel. But the idea is that you have to, the brach and the ikr has to go on the tafel. How could the brach and the ikr go on the tafel if you never even knew you are going to have this tafel? You never knew you are going to add sugar. You went somewhere else, you went down to the closet, you took out sugar, which you weren't planning to have, and you added more sugar. You ever saw somebody making a new bracha, bracha before he puts another spoon of sugar? Making a bracha on the sugar before he adds spices? Nobody makes another bracha on that. Why not? Because it is common that people add spices, that's considered darker, because it's normal. Because it's a very normal thing, so therefore when you st- made the bracha on the ikr, it, will c- it covers the spice that you have now, and any spice, which is a normal thing that you will always add. I need to stop for a second and explain something which is very important to understand. The lum is how this works. When we talk about, the, we said there's a tuffle, a secondary food that's there to improve the food. And there's a secondary food, they're eating it for a side purpose altogether, like the herring with the fish. It's very important to establish over here, and please just hold your patience, because we, we will talk about specific examples, soon It's very important to establish that when you're eating something for a secondary purpose, the pshat in halacha is, it's not considered you're eating food. I don't know if that's the actual lambda, but it's easier to understand it that way. I prefer to explain it that way. When you're eating, when you have something stuck in your throat, and you're taking a drink, you don't need a drink right now. You need a machine that removes things that are stuck in your throat. This machine happens to be a drink. You need a technique, you need a strategy. You don't need food. It's a piece of cardboard as far as you're concerned. 
The bread that's eaten after the salty herring, the bread is not bread. You don't want bread right now. You want to take away the taste of the salty herring. So it's a piece of cardboard as far as you're concerned. It's not food. Why am I mentioning that? Because, why, why is that important to understand that way? Because if you do have an interest in that food, then the whole scenario changes. If a person is eating bread after the herring, but he actually is in the mood of bread as well. He happens to be hungry right now, as someone mentioned before with the mashka. Then you can't say that this is secondary. It's, it actually carries its own, it's, own, it's not non-food, this is a food right now. When we're talking about tafel hamelafis, when we're talking about something which is there to improve another food, when you're adding an item into a food to give it a taste, over there the pshat is that we look only at this, this, this became part of the other food, this became metamorphosis, there's a word like that in English, right? There's a metamorphosis. The second food became part and parcel of the first food. When you're adding salt into your soup, we don't say salt and soup. Salt becomes soup, no? So I make a brach in the soup and the salt is all part of that. When you have herring and bread, bread never became part of herring. The pshat is, the bread is not bread right now. The bread is totally secondary. It doesn't have any purpose. It's, it's, it's a machine. It's a machine that takes away a bitter taste. The minute you want bread, requires a bracha. But what if someone wants salt? Let's say a guy, he likes salt. No? He makes a bracha on the salt. Because the salt is considered secondary to the soup. Whether you like salt, you don't like salt. So for example, the case we mentioned before, after mashka. The farbaisen after mashka doesn't get a bracha if clearly your whole intention purely is to remove the taste of the mashka. But if you talk a one farbaisen, it's not a piece of cardboard right now. They don't serve anymore those air kichlach they used to serve by the Rebbe Sabrengen. Right now it's about cake. It's about taste. And it's with cream. Now you want the cake. So it's not a tuffle. In fact, even way back, the Alter Rebbe mentions, and it's mentioned even before the Alter Rebbe, before people became very, very complex human beings and can't know exactly what they want and what they don't want and what they feel and what they don't feel, the Alter Rebbe says, way before the advent of psychology, that toiv lihimana, it's good to avoid eating bread or eating food to take away the taste of another food, ki mi who could identify whether they're eating it to take away a taste or elisoy daleve because they want to become full. Farbaisen after mashka, do you really know what it is? Is it because I want to take away the mashka because you want the farbaisen? <laughs> it's so confusing, you don't even know what you want. So the Alter Rebbe says, avoid that. Well, how do you avoid that? doesn't mean that you don't have to have farbaisen. No, farbaisen is very, very important. You just switch the order. Have the farbaisen, l'she, mitzvahs, food. To eat mezoinus. And then you'll have the mashka. The Alter Rebbe says that if you're after a meal, usually then you're doing it only to take away the taste. In today's day and age, even after the meal, you don't know anymore. But the Alter Rebbe says that if it's before a meal, you don't even know what you want. There's a Chiddush of the Alter Rebbe, which could be also one of the reasons why people, our meaning is we always make up, but there's a Machloik is what you're supposed to do first, if I buy some of the Mashka. There's a big Machloik about it, there's a Machloik is that reason, and the Vistas have had a Machloik is about it. But the meaning is today we make a bracha first on the Fabais and then on the Mashka. One reason we just mentioned, ki mi yuchel how do you know what your purpose is, right? So just avoid that problem. There's also another Chiddush of the Alter Rebbe. The Alter Rebbe holds, and this traces back to a person called the Evan Ho'ezer, argues with the Magnav Ram, and the Alter Rebbe follows the shit of the Evan Ho'ezer. The Alter Rebbe says, there's a Midas Chassidus, a pious behavior, that whenever you're faced with an Iker and Tafel, Try to see if you can chaperay an extra bracha. Toiv laharbis be brachas. It's always good to make more brachas. Now we have a principle that you're not supposed to make a bracha. Shein tzrich. We have something called a bracha levatala. That's not a bracha in vain. Then there's something called a bracha shein tzrich, an unnecessary bracha. You didn't. You could have gotten away without it. You didn't have to make that bracha. Al Tzeva says this is not a bracha shein tzrich. This is a bracha hatzrich. Bracha shein tzrichas, you didn't mean to make the bracha. Here, no, this has its own bracha. The food, the mezoinus has its own bracha. The mashka has its own bracha. The mezoinus carries its own bracha. 
you had a technique that you can cover them both with one bracha. La harvest be brachas means don't do that technique. Try to let it keep its own bracha. Midas chesidus, that's a pious behavior. You should always try be having an ikra and a tafel to f- make a bracha on the tafel and not let it be covered by the ikra. Make a bracha on the tafel first. Even if you're going to change around the order, the holy order of mezayne, say, tzadam, shahakal, you can start with a shahakal first. That's fine. Midas chesidus overrides that. The idea of making more brachas overrides that. If you're going to make a bracha and follow the order, you won't be able to make extra brachas, don't do that. And the only time we shouldn't follow the Smidus Chassidus as al if you need to make a bracha and the ikr first because it's more chaviv, it's more precious for you. Something which is more chaviv, that, that's more important. First you make a bracha on the chaviv, and then, then you'll be stuck. Then you'll have to make just on the ikr, and then you'll only make one bracha. So that's a very important chiddush of the Al-Tareb with regard to this whole thing that we're talking about Ikr and Tafel tonight. The al says, better to make a bracha on the Tafel first, because if you're eating first the Tafel, you have to make another bracha. And you'll get two brachas. It is accepted amongst Rabbanim, the al doesn't say this, but it's accepted amongst the majority of Rabbanim, that what I just said in the name of the al applies to foods that are not in the mixture. Case like we said right now. Mashka with Farbaisen. Most Rabbanim, I've yet to see people that, I mean, they, they know, the others that disagree, let me rephrase that. But I've yet to see people practice it. But they have a mixture of foods that are mixed together, they'll start ripping apart the mixture and taking out the tuffle ingredients from the mixture so they should be able to make an extra bracha. They'll try to get the salt out of the, spi- out of the, out of the soup and get some coffee, out, well, coffee out of the, it won't work over there. The same bracha, huh? Same with the ice cream. And sometimes it's a bit more complicated because there's dog and so many more aspects to it. That's why I'm not sticking to that example. So, we, in things that are not a taruv, things that are not a mixture, then there's an Indian, they're not mixed. You're eating them in such a way that the ikr is covering the tuffle, that one is, is becoming secondary. So, don't eat it that way. Let's move on now to some examples of what we call ikr and halacha. Halachic ikr. We mentioned roiv, majority, a food which is a majority ingredient, is considered an ikr. Whenever we have a mixture of foods, and we don't know which one is ikr, if you know which one is ikr, don't look at roiv. Yeah, I know which is the primary ingredient, but you don't know which is the primary ingredient. Both are primary, I want both, none of them are primary. When everybody's equal, when everybody's equal, there's a way how to decide what to do. The Ben Snipes was once asked, by a priest, it says in the Torah, Achri Rabbim you have to follow the majority. No, the majority of people are Christians, so why don't you follow the Christian religion? So he said, we follow Roy when we don't know what to do. When you know what to do, you don't have to follow the majority. And the same principle applies over here. When you know one is the primary ingredient, you don't say, oh, but why are Roy? Roy is when everything is, when everything is, equal. when all things are equal, then we have a position where we follow the majority. Majority is considered a majority when they're mixed together. When there's no mixture, when one person's in one room saying one thing and two people in another room saying something else and they didn't have a discussion between them, there's no halacha following majority. Majority is when there's a mixture. When there's a group, we follow the majority of the group. There's an interesting discussion in halacha that if we're supposed to take from poiskim, it's counting numbers of poiskim, and follow the majority. When there's a machlek sapaskim, or do we say that since those poiskim never had this discussion between themselves, then there's no majority. Legaba, our halacha tonight, majority in a mixture of foods, it's if there's a mixture of foods, we follow majority. So you're faced with a complicated food that modern day food technology has brought to your table. I don't know what's the ikr and what's the tuffle. I don't know, to me they're all the same, whatever. Just give me what I just want to eat and get over and done with it. You don't know which is the primary ingredient, which is the secondary ingredient. They're both primary, they're both secondary. Look which is the majority. And what if you can't even see which one is the majority? It's half and half. Half and half. Another way of saying that is, it's hard to assess. So, Paiskum say, so add from one ingredient. And if you don't have to add, then take off from one ingredient. Make sure that you face with a majority and a minority. And here comes a very, very important caveat, a very important nakuda. 
There's a big machlokas on this topic. There's the Chaya Adam, the Kitzur Shachanarech. There's some people that are always looking to make extra brachas, and some people are always trying to cut out a brachas. You have a bunch of foods together. How far do we take this halacha of majority? What is considered mixed? When you have a bunch of things together, but each one is distinguishable on its own, do you also say that you have majority? Where each one is a standalone food? The Alter Rebbe has his own opinion on this topic. And I need you to listen carefully because there's a big machlok as amongst Rabbanei Anash how to understand the Alter Rebbe. That makes us another two opinions. The Alter Rebbe is of, of the position that majority and minority in a mixture is only if the foods are cooked together. They need to be mixed. And mix is if they're cooked together. When two foods are cooked together, then I look at, the ingre- at this mixture and I say, uh, which is the majority, which is the minority, and I'll make a brach on the majority. What would seem to be a classical example, before I mention the second opinion, is fruit salad. It's a very common thing. People have fruit salad. Today's day's fruit salad are not just apples and grapes. A lot of different foods are there. You have eight, and you have hadama. What brach do I make? Follow majority, right? But the Alter Rebbe said majority is only it's cooked. The fruit salad is not cooked together. That's one view. The second shot, the second interpretation of the Alter Rebbe, and there's some strong evidence that's what Alter Rebbe really is saying, the Alter Rebbe never said that. When he did say it, the Alter Rebbe, every single time when he says that the foods have to be cooked, is specifically talking about a salad and a liquid. You'll see it three times in the al Every time it's talking about a salad and a liquid, and every day you use the word, they have to be cooked. The al says, when you have a solid food and a liquid, they don't mix together. They're never called a mixture. That's consistent with another opinion of the al with regard to bugs mixing into a, into a drink. Eh, whatever. They, they, it could be consistent. I don't know if The same idea. Solids, Yavish, Allah, solids and liquids don't mix. And because solids and liquids don't mix, the only way we can consider this a mixture if it was cooked together it became one unit. If it wasn't cooked together, the fact that you put a bunch of pieces of granola in this liquid, that doesn't make them a mixture. But going back to the fruit salad, because it's not a solid and a liquid, it's two solids, they're sliced up, they're put together into one bowl, they're mixed together, that is a mixture. And then we'll follow the bracha of the roiv. That's the second position how to learn Pshat and al and um, at least the Mizgeres HaShulchan, amongst other Paiskim, if I'm not mistaken, Mizgeres HaShulchan, yeah, say that's Pshat and al And it makes much more sense. And even if you're not sure who's right and who's wrong, then we have another Klaal in Halacha. I might be wrong, but we have a Klaal of Safa Brachas, So you're better off making, following the position that you just make a Bracha on the Rav. Now here comes an interesting thing. These, these two interesting questions, which for whatever reason, there's a question that had only been addressed in the last 40, 50 years. No earlier place can discuss this. I guess food technology wasn't that advanced then. Even though it's a very straightforward question. What happens if a person has a mixture? He has 40%, a simple fruit salad. 40% of the fruit salad is bananas. 30% is a shahakov. And 30% are oranges. So what does roiv mean? It has to be over 50%. One is 30, one is 30, and one is 40. So do you say 40, the one that's the most, wins? Or do you say it has to be roiv? That's a straightforward question. For some reason, until a couple of years ago, nobody discussed this. Based on what it would seem like, this is no. This is a, this is a din of roiv. Roiv is a din in Torah. Torah says we go after Rabbim. Torah never says you follow 40%. There's no such din in Torah. It's not through who's more. Torah says that we follow the majority. The majority takes over the whole food. So if you have 40% banana, the whole thing doesn't become banana. You still have 30% oranges and 30% of whatever shackle food you put in there. So you can't, you still have to, you won't be able to follow Rav. Another example, which is also a question that contemporary priests can discuss, they seem to say differently than what we're going to say tonight. But again, I don't know why it hasn't been discussed earlier. 
do you look at the roiv in a food or roiv in a bracha? Well, what's the question? The question is, if a person has her ace, a bunch of different aces, and a bunch of different hadamas, he has apples, oranges, pears, the majority is eight. Do you say since the majority is eight, you make it an eight? Or no, you have to have majority of a certain food. Majority is apples. And it's common sense says, well, again, common sense is not always common like we said before, but l'choyr al piseichel, roiv is a, is a din that the Torah says if a certain food is roiv, that food becomes the main ingredient. But what does it mean that a certain barach is roiv? The barachas are not mixed here. The barachas and the siddur. What's mixed in the plate is foods. I need to have one food override all the other foods. So if you have, because there's more ace than hadama, if you should make hadama, where does it say so? We can't combine different foods that are the same bracha. Again, it's another contemporary machlekes, and it's not clear. So we'll talk towards the end of the shir tonight, we'll talk about solutions, how to avoid all these kind of problems and shilas, which are not clear, the al doesn't even discuss them. We'll talk about how you can avoid shilas. I see that some people here that came to the same shi that was in Hebrew. So I don't know if they're coming because they want to get a chazar a second half. It's, going to, it's the same exact shi. I don't want to have Gnevis das chas Okay, Let me mention one more clown halacha and from there we'll talk about practical examples because everybody's rushing to sample the food at least in learning about the food. People are getting hungry. We mentioned the roiv, and we mentioned also another din that the Torah tells us, a Torah rule, that grain is considered the primary ingredient. And when it comes to grain, when it comes to roiv, so as I gave the example before the Rebbeins and Eipschitz, we don't follow Chas Hashanah Christianity because they're the majority, because I know which is a primary. I know what it is. It's not only primary, I know which is correct. So Roiv is only going to have a suffix. But when I come to the principle of Dagon, that grain is considered an Iker, I, I don't even ask you what you think which is the Iker. We take the item, and we look at the ingredient list, and if there's grain in the ingredients, the Torah says grain takes over everything, and you can forget about it, the grain is the main thing, and we make a Mazaynas. And the way this works is, if you want to if we want to talk Lumdus over here, so... We mentioned in the beginning of the shir, the shayla of ikr and tafel means you don't make a bracha on tafel. Or the ikr, the bracha on ikr goes on the tafel. And with grain, it's not this nor that. With grain, the way it works is, the whole food becomes grain. Not that you make a bracha on grain and it covers the rest of the food. The Torah says that when you mix grain into something, mishapech kol apras kuli, everything became changed into grain. And we'll see why it's important to give that explanation. One, you could explain it differently, but that explanation helps us understand a few halachas. So when we say this rule, the Torah says the grain is always considered the ikr, that's if it's there to give a taste. If it's there as grain. If the grain is there because it holds things together, so it's not grain. It's like I said before, it's a piece of cardboard. The grain is not acting as grain. It's acting now like a preservative, like a, like a coloring agent. We're talking about grain when it's there to act as a food called grain. There's a lot of type of, a lot of tivus, a lot of different types of chocolates and things that have grain in them. And the grain, a very, very small amount of grain, but the grain is considered a primary ingredient. And the halacha is, sorry, the grain is a minority ingredient, but Torah says grain is considered primary, and therefore the halacha is you're making a mezainus. Unless it's there to stick, to color, for smell, to, to hold together, just like we said, when you eat bread after the herring, the bread is considered secondary, even though it's grain. So when you're eating, when grain is mixed into a food to hold it together, it's not grain right now. Right now, it's a piece of carbon. It's just holding together. What about for a crunch? A salad or a soup after that? Pasta, that's, oh, that's taste. The crunch is the taste. Um, yeah. So according to the al actually, the al doesn't say this, but is probably five, six places in Al-Tareb that's a very strong rice in Al-Tareb holds like that and that even if you could identify the grain separately and even the grain wasn't cooked together with the other food 
you just have a piece of grain with something else, and you're eating grain with something else, like, for example, a hot dog with a bun, let's assume the bun is mezoinus, next year we'll discover that the bun was really hamoitzi, right? that's next year's topic. But for tonight, let's assume the bun is mezoinus, so, well, let's say it's taka mezoinus. So, the mezoinus is the primary ingredient, I, the hot dog is assuming the primary ingredient, and it's just to hold it, and well, it's not, if it's just to hold it, then you're right. But since it's not just to hold, you just need some push to support. And because the hot dog, you just took it out from the barbecue and it's pressure very hot. So you put it into a bun right away to hold it and you pressure don't want the bun. As far as you're concerned, you would wrap it with paper also. But it, uh, other than that case, where you want the taste of the bun, so you make just mazonis. Yes, now, every soup, every soup is, uh, well, okay, soup is different. I'm going to talk about that in a second. I said soup is a bit complicated. No, so salad, so, I mean, if you're salad, yeah. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me mention a few guidelines before people are going to start asking questions because there's a few important guidelines over here. Many price can say, Dr. Shulchan says very clearly, that it's important that the mezoina should be something that always, that normally, I should say, goes into your spoon. In other words, what makes things, what puts the mezoina together with the other food? We're talking about, obviously, it has to be a mixture over here. And that's because if you ate one today and eating, if I'm going to eat mezoina today, and the shackle is six weeks from now, well, mezoinus is the primary ingredient, right? They have to be something, it's the mezoinus together with something else. What well, makes it together? Does the bowl, the plate that they're all in, connect them to something about the plate? No. If I'm eating them simultaneously. So if they're, you don't have to every spoon eat them simultaneously, but if normally it's made, then mezoinus should go along with it, bederech klal together. Then even in, the, in if one spoon, I'm right now going to be eating potatoes and tomatoes and vegetables, but because it's made be eaten with mezoinus, the mezoinus takes over. But if they're large pieces, which is supposed to, you put them in the same plate. Now you could serve. On one side of the plate you're serving mezoinus, on the other side of the plate you're serving another food. The plate doesn't connect them. But if they're mixed, it doesn't have to be cooked, and they're made to be eaten together, even though right now, this spoon, you're not, but lapoil, it's made that the mezoinus should be eaten together with everything else, then the bracha mezoinus is the, is the only bracha you make. What's for sure, this is the Aruch HaShulchan says this, I don't know if everybody would agree to this, one thing is definitely for sure, the first spoon, you definitely have to have mezoinus. Because you can't make a bracha on a potato, mezoinus. No such thing. Even with alumnus that I said, it's as if the potato became grain. Okay, it's as if, but it didn't manage to become grain. So you can't make mezoinus on a potato. You can make a bracha on a mezoinus, and now, everything else is, becomes mezoinus. So for example, let's give a couple of examples. Chalant. Chalant could have two mezoinus and they could be kishk in the chalant. And also the barley. Barley is a machloikus. What brachi you make in al says you only eat a chasuda, but chalant is usually not a machloikus because it takes a while to look. If only if it cooks very, very well. You can't cook things much, much more well than you cook barley in the chalant overnight. At that stage, if that's not mezoinus in the barley, I don't know when it's going to become mezoinus. So that is mezoinus. So there's mezoinus in the chalant. That mezoinus is the primary ingredient. Ah, there's so many other things in the chalant that's not relevant to us. Okay, if, if it's a liquidy chalant, like the, some other places make a different kind of chalant, which is just a soup, and you put in one piece of barley, those who don't have any money, now, we'll talk about soup in a second. Cheesecake. Cheesecake is mezoinus. It could be, it's, it's, it's irrelevant the fact that the cheese is a very thin layer. And, sorry, the mezoinus is a thin layer. A, a slice of graham cracker on the bottom, and the rest is just cheese. It's made to be eaten together, so mezoin- and it's there to give a taste, not just to hold it. So you make a bracha mezoinus. Oh, bracha is a bit more complicated. Now we'll see if we have extra time. We'll talk about that. Ice cream sandwich, the case that we mentioned in the beginning of the year, according to this svara, not a question. The bracha and ice cream sandwich is mezoinus. Mezoinus is considered ikir. Ice cream in a cone, Rabbi Marlal of Ashalom, in the Brachas Guide has Paskin, and you can argue like this and like that, but um, he, the guideline that he gave was that if it's a sweet cone, so it's there to give a taste, and the Brachas Mezainus. But if it's a cone with unflavored cone, then it's just there to hold it, mm-hmm. although you can start arguing, it's just there to hold it. If you want to hold it, put it into a cup. I'm just repeating his psak. Then the cone is a tuffle, and that's by the way Halacha mentions Shulchan Aruch. Shulchan Aruch says if somebody eats merkachas, somebody eats a uh, I say merkachas in English, eingemachts, no, that's good English, uh, some cooked dish, and he's eating an on such kichlach. 
Hadavar Yudua, it is known that the reason they serve these kichlach, a shaloy tam for your dam, just you shouldn't get your hands dirty. So clearly that you don't make a bracha mezainus. But if you're eating it with dufshanim, shehem toivun lemachel, dufshanim are rikichlach, but they have sugary, sweet kichlach, exactly like we're talking about, a sugar cone. Shem toivun lemachel, they have a good taste. Then the bracha you just make on the mezainus. I said I don't want to talk about soups because it's another a separate topic. But in soup, the halach. The one is orange, just in the corner, it covers the ice cream. Oh, but you have to eat the cone first, like I said, yeah. I, a soup, I said, is a whole different discussion, and I think you, so, somebody asked it before about soups. I, we mentioned in the beginning, and it's the sweater that I'm saying right now is almost clearly in Al Tareb and Pedic Zayn Halacha Chafal, if I'm not mistaken, the number of the Halacha. Almost clearly Al Tareb said the sweater, there's Paiskan and Paiskan that writes, Swadah is Lakan, Lakan, Lakan. Still, it's in Al Tareb, but it seems almost clear that Al Tareb says this. The svada we said is that everything is considered grainy. And once we understand a svada, we can understand why when you put mezoinus into a soup, it, will, it won't work, this halacha. Why? Because the vart here is that everything turned into grain. So the soup is also grain. What happens when you drink grain? What do you make when you drink grain? Shahakal. What grain do we drink? Beer. What do you make in beer? Shahakal. Why? Because it's made to drink. So even though the, everything turned into grain, but it's a liquid grain. Liquid grain is shahakal. So over there we don't say that cloud, but if it's in a salad, if it's in a food, and it's a bit of grain, there was a big shiloh many years ago, there was a big ibicarin about licorice. Now it's pretty clear that there's letters that they wrote to the company, it's pretty clear that they put flour in the licorice purely just for dabik to hold it together, not to give it taste. Unless you're talking about the other kind of licorice. I think there's this, in Australia they have the other kind of licorice, they probably imported it already over here by now. You know, the, you know, the thick, heavy licorice? That's the old one. The, huh? It's here? Not, not, the, not the red ones, the black ones. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe they make everything every single color, I don't even know anymore. So there is licorice where they just make it just to give it, just to hold it together. So the, in that case, of course, you're not going to make it mezoyne. But if a flower is there to give it taste, it should be mezoyne. Of course, the, the, there is a famous kasha on the miniga oilam. Miniga oilam is a people make on schnitzel. Shahakul. It's not the only miniga in Hilchus Brachas, which is hard to understand. The minigas you make on chocolate ha'etz. Chocolate, uh, sorry, chocolate shahakul. It really should be ha'etz. You look at me like that, right? Ram Arasa chocolate eight. Yeah. He, he, he wants it to be eight, but everybody's making shackles, so let's make shackle. Uh, that, that's, that's exactly the description of the halacha. If you follow the guidelines, uh, there's swatas that are given in later postcards to try to explain this meaning. Chocolate is a, something which is planted purely to make this type of called chocolate. You can't eat the, ch- the, the, the chocolate the way it grows plain, raw. You can only eat it in this mixture where they add all the garbage with it. So it's just still say hey, it's that's the only way you eat it. Uh, the meaning is making a chahakal. Let me go back to schnitzel. Schnitzel, according to the, all the guidelines we just now said. What's schnitzel? And breaded chicken, breaded fish. It has grain in it, so it should be mezainus. The meaning is people making a chahakal. Now there's so many svaras, and people wrote pages and pages to explain, starting to not only to. The, create new halachas based on this mini, we create new mitzis, and the reason why people put in flour, they discovered is that it shouldn't burn. Hakkash and shine. That's not the reason why people put in flour. They put in flour clearly to give it a taste. That's why they put in matzah mil. Not that it shouldn't burn. There are many ways to create, make sure that the chicken doesn't burn. And matzah mil isn't the only way. And mitzis, especially if you go to the store-bought ones, they mamish put a lot of flour because they're trying to save money. So less chicken, less fish, and the whole thing is mamish breaded from top to bottom. It's but even the ones that are made at home, where there's much less matzah meal, but still the matzah is there to give it taste. Ask a typical balabas, it will tell you that's the truth. The minig is made shahakal, the enach, the minig klum. And there is an eitzah, there's different explanations given for this minig. There is an eitzah how to avoid the shayla and to find a way. In case you're worried that maybe really it should be shahakal, but I know the altarebis is really mezoinus, and you'll go to one of these and the devil will say, listen, should be mezoinus, but the minig is shahakal. And go to the devil and say, the eitzah should be minig, the halach is mezoinus. And the third, I will say, since the meaning shahakal must dominate, there's a good reason why shahakal. And now you're all confused, as we all are. So there's a couple of aces that we can do to avoid shyness when it comes to ikran and tuffle. We went through a couple of guidelines on ikran and tuffle. 
after everything that we said tonight, you will still will be faced with the food in front of you. You still won't know what bracha to make. You don't know which is the ikr and which is the tafel. You don't know the facts. And you also might not know the halachas either. Especially that we learned there's so many different machlaikas. So there is a pashta etzah. If you eat the ikr first, and then the tafel, whenever the ikr and tafel are made to be eaten together, the tafel stays tafel even if the tafel is eaten separately. But if you eat the tafel first, the tafel is never covered with a bracha. So the pashta etzah is, Whenever you have a mixture, take the item that might be the tuffle. We call, we'll call it Suffolk tuffle. I don't know if this item is a tuffle or requires its own bracha. Take this item, which is suf, maybe a tuffle, eat him first. When you're eating him first, for sure you make a bracha on it. The al says sometimes that's even a midas chasidus. So do that always. Always take this item, which might be a tuffle, and eat him first. And that's not a bracha shein tzricha. A bracha shein tzricha is when you make no bracha for no reason. I have a very good reason because I have no idea if this is a tafel or not. I have a reason. That is my reason. So it's a bracha tzricha. Another, if you don't like this particular etza, you can take another food to cover your suffolk tafel. See, schnitzel is a bit more complicated because schnitzel, there are two suffolk tafels. In schnitzel, we don't know. Is the chicken the main ingredient and the grain is the tuffle, as the minik tells us? Or is the grain the ikr and the chicken is the tuffle, as the shachanarach tells us? So when you have over there, both of them are fighting for the, for the, for the crown, ikr. You have a food where, I don't know, maybe this is the ikr, or maybe there is no ikr. In schnitzel, no, each one says, I'm the ikr. Everybody says, um, no, what's lush in the medrash? Ani Barash, I'm first. No, if you have. So you can eat this one, eat the tuffle first. So I mean, this is a tuffle. So you need to take at least one food, either a mezainus or a shahakal. You have to take both. Not part of this mixture. From outside the mixture. Not from the grain and the chicken. From the fridge. Take another mezainus. Take a cookie. And now you solve your problem. First, take a shahakal. And make a bracha on the, take out a piece of the chicken. When you eat chicken by itself, there's no shayla what bracha to make. Take out a piece of the chicken and make it a shahakal. No, that's no problem. You might have covered the, the grain. Now take a cookie and make them a zainus. Or you can take, instead of take, if you don't have cookies in your house, you can make soda. And do the other way around. First take a piece of the grain, peel off a bit of the breading, the, breading, the, the, the covering of the schnitzel, make it a zainus. That might cover your chicken, it might not cover your chicken. Okay, now take a cup of soda. And then you're okay. That's if you really want to be yoy to call a deus, which is always the best thing to do. You can do that. Why you didn't you get it right Because Dagan. Dagan overpowers everything. The suffix, because we don't know this halacha, why the minig is, why it is such a strange minig. Not a suffix, when we, we met before suffix in Metzius. It's not a suffix, but see, a suffix was shot in this halacha. Why the whole veil doesn't do like it says a shogunach. It's a different kind of suffix. Huh? There is no, it's not a suffix. It's called, called suffix mechsad and yudia. Um, how are we doing in terms of time? Yeah, we're pretty much supposed to finish. Just going to mention mamish, mamish, bekitzer. Um, a couple of um, examples. If people have a salad with cheese, there's some um, certain salads that are made with vegetables and cheese. Greek salad, I think it's called. The derech klal, the metzius is, the cheese is the truffle, and the salad is the main thing. What if by a person, that's the metzius, that the cheese is there to make the salad, enhance the salad. If you taka one both, then we have the other klal, called the klal of roiv. Roiv is certainly the salad. If, if your kavana is, if your kavana would be just for the cheese, right, then roiv is not there to go against the fact. But if you want both, I want salad, I want cheese, I want everything. Then follow the rest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you have a, and if you have a suffix now, so we gave you the eight before. You don't know if the cheese is tough or not. Make a bracha first on the cheese and then on the vegetables. Um, cereal with milk, b'derech klal. The metzius says, b'chlal, b'derech klal, when you have liquids and solids, but the liquid is considered the 
tachel to the salad. So cereal with milk. The metzius is, you see, I said before there's a din of dogon. That was a din of dogon. Now I'm talking about a metzius. The metzius is, the milk is tachel. Before we said that dogon doesn't apply to liquids, right? That's if you want to use the halacha of dogon. But if you're using the facts, the facts are, that the milk is only there to give a taste to the cereal. If somebody wants both, he wants cereal and, and milk, and if milk is not there to enhance the cereal, he wants, likes to, wants to have milk, wants to have cereal. You know what? I'll eat them both together. And Reb Nissen Emenev used to say, you know, mainly you want to have butter. I understand. You want to have bread. Why do you have to eat them together? You couldn't have someone have to eat them together. So this guy is fakert. He wants to have cereal. He always wants to have a cup of milk. You know what? I'll mix them both together. So then, if you want both, then you make a bracha on the salad and on the liquid. And you're not going to follow roiv, because you don't follow roiv when it comes to a salad and liquid unless they are cooked together. In a case where a person has makes a bracha just on the cereal, because the cereal is the main thing, it seems pretty clear that you mix the cereal with the milk, fine, you make a bracha on the cereal, and all the milk is covered, but then there's milk left afterwards. But pashtas, you have to make a bracha on that milk. That milk is not tuffle. That milk is not part of the equation altogether. When do we say... No. When do we say that if you eat the tuffle after the ikr, the tuffle doesn't require its own bracha, if the nefush name yachad, if they were baked together, and nasu kedav and echad mamash. But if you took stir, you took milk, and you mixed them together, and they're not really, they're tarubas, because you just mix them. So when they're to mix, they're mixed. When they're not mixed, afterwards, eating the tuffle by itself, it requires its own bracha. No, 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 no. No, but they're eating them together, no? You don't, you, they don't have to be mixed together. So, so then you make a bracha on the mezoinus? Yeah, but the shayla is amnesh. The shayla is azay. When you're eating, let's, let's say, ice cream in the comb. But then you're going to be eating ice cream by itself, you're asking me? I, so I said it right away from the beginning. You never will make a bracha on the... On the the birchas the ikr if you didn't eat ikr first. Of course you have to eat ikr first. You sort of take a bracha of the cone. But not only you have to take a bracha of the cone, if you're going to finish the whole entire cone and then eat ice cream, I'm not sure how the shaykh and the cheese because it's going to be all over the floor. But hey, chetimtza, let's say a person finished the whole cone and then all the ice cream dripped out and it's on the plate. And now he's eating plain ice cream. Of, of course he'll make a bracha just on the ice cream. Now he's not. He's not. It's only when the nasr shnei yachad, you could argue a svara, and I don't want to go into svaras right now, that the kon l'chetchile b'tevet til dosle was made to be eaten with ice cream. Love, Dafka. Kon could be eaten in the same kon. The Alter Rebbe says, when do you say, v'oz k'sh'oich l'levade, atof l'levade, e'ne mevadech, k'sh'nefu yachad al mitchile sasiyosem nasu k'dov rechad. The kon was never made together one thing with ice cream. The ice cream sandwich was made in the store as one thing. Chetchile was formed. Mash enke and the ice cream. And if a person is going to eat in the cone, he'll make a brach on the mezoinus on the cone. Eat it with the ice cream. He doesn't have to have every single bite have with the ice cream. He finished the entire cone, and now he has left the ice cream. Of course, he'll make shahakal. Le'idoch, if a person is having blueberry cake. So the Alter Rebbe says, first, the Alter Rebbe says blueberry cake. He says, um, peters he put into a milli of peters he put into a cake. And he's making a brach on the cake. And he finished all cake, and now he has leftover blueberries. blueberries. You don't make a brach on that, because that became one with the cake. And a chanami. Um, anyhow, but the, the, it, it, like I said, it is a bit complicated, all these things, but if you, if you follow the eights that we said before, that if we ever have a suffolk tuffel, you make a brach on the tuffel first. Or if you have two, if both are suffolk, then you just take an outside item, you don't have a problem. There's a famous clown, the clown halach, we say that you now make a brach shein sricha. You now make an unnecessary bracha. You're also not allowed to al eat without a bracha. Another thing, also lahanis mo'em azeh b'loi bracha. If a person is making a bracha to protect himself from being nenem b'loi bracha, then it's not called a bracha shayin sericha. So there's a lot of times in halacha we say, you know what? Have in mind that this food shouldn't cover that food. Not all persons say you're allowed to do that, but when a case of a person has a shayla, he doesn't know what to do. He's stuck. So he's doing it lafuki nafshim eplukti. He's doing it in order because he doesn't want to go into machlaikas. So it's not called bracha shein tzricha balash and alter rebbe uses tzricha tzricha. I I need to make this bracha. I need it because I have a problem right now. So I'm not making an unnecessary bracha. But you, but the other way around is not a, is a problem. Then it's a bracha levatola. If you're going to make the case with the blueberry cake, you can make a bracha on the cake. 
and you finish the whole cake, and now you have some blueberries left, that's not called bracha shein sricha. That's called bracha levatala. That's a bracha in vain. These blueberries were already cut, fully covered. They were already covered. They were already covered by the cake. And now you just start making a bracha out of nowhere. That you know what to do. But to eat it first, and to avoid the problem, because you have a shiloh, that's never a problem. As a labor shelf, like we started in the beginning of the shir, that in order to become a chas, we learn middle of the brachas, we should appreciate this in the, in the kudah, at the ganze velt. It's tafel tzalakus, and we'll see that the beast of Mashiach taking me out of Mamash.